Hi, in this video, we will learn the basics of navigating the 3D viewport in Blender. To rotate around the 3D viewport, middle click and then drag. To zoom in and out, just scroll in and scroll out. And to move your viewport, just shift, middle click and drag. So that's pretty much the basics of actually manipulating the 3D view. You can also have a specific views of the 3D viewport. So to do this, you hit the keys on your numpad. So let's first start with numpad 5. Numpad 5 toggles between perspective view and orthogonal view. The perspective view is sort of like the view that you see from your eyes. The length and dimensions will appear different due to the sort of the foreshortening of your eyes. Uh, you know, from very, very far away, everything, the length and everything appears a little bit distorted and that's natural because that's how our eyes work but if you press 5 again this is the, the orthogonal view everything appears fixed the length the dimensions they're all they're all correct um, in real life we don't see it like this but uh, I guess mathematically this is a bit more correct to look at and modeling is a lot easier in this uh, view because you get everything in uh, correct dimensions and everything moving on the next numpad is numpad 1 so by pressing numpad 1, we go to the front view. Alright, so I can sort of see that it, it's not centered to the middle. So I'm just going to sort of force that by moving the 3D viewport. Uh, as we said, we can do shift, uh, middle click. But you can also do control, scroll in and out. Shift, scroll in and out will move it up and down. Control, scroll in and out will move it left and right. So that allows me to force exactly how I want the 3D view to look. Numpad 1 is the front view. So you can see over here, front, orthogonal. Pressing 5 will be front perspective. 5 again, front orthogonal. Pressing numpad 3 is the right view. Pr numpad 7 is the top view. And numpad 9 is the bottom view. To see the left view, there is, is no actual numpad key for that. You will have to make use of the right view but instead of pressing numpad 3 we press control numpad 3 so going through that again numpad 1 is the front numpad 3 is right numpad 7 is top numpad 9 is bottom control 3 is left and control 1 is the back so let's now look at the keys that are in between those two will rotate the view um, towards us up and down pressing numpad 4 will rotate the 3d view on the Z axis. Pressing 6 will rotate it in the other direction. Pressing 8 will obviously rotate up and down in the opposite direction. So if I just go ahead and rotate the 3D view by uh, middle click dragging like that and then press 2 you can see it in action. Or 4 so 2 will rotate up and down, 8 will rotate it back again, 4 will rotate it left and right, 6 will rotate it back again and there you go so you can see how much you can manipulate the 3d view if you don't have a middle mouse button then um, there are other ways to zoom in other than scrolling in and out you can press numpad plus or numpad minus that does the same thing as scrolling in and out you'll notice that the the 3d view is now rotating around the origin but say i select the camera and now I want the 3D view to rotate around the camera. Uh, if I rotate now, I can't exactly see the camera. It comes in parts, but it, I'd rather the 3D view just rotate around the camera itself. So you can do that by pressing on the numpad key area, the, the dot, the, the decimal point button. I don't, you know, it's just a little dot. So now you'll notice that the, the view suddenly focuses on the camera only. So now when I carry out the uh, view transformations such as uh, middle click dragging it now rotates around the camera so this is great for rotating the 3d view around an object another thing that you can do is if you have so many 3d objects like that are cluttered around your entire scene you might have a street or a city or a landscape you probably want to work on your 3d object like on its own locally without inter interference from other objects which may be in the way so to do that, you can select your 3D object. So I'm going to select the cube, for instance. And you can, on the numpad key area, you can press the slash key or the divide key. 
So now that works in the local view, as you can see the local view. So if I zoom out, the camera and the lamp have disappeared. Don't worry, they haven't been deleted. They're just, well, they're just hidden. You're just working with just the one object over here. And it might not be important right now, it might seem pointless, but once you have many, many objects, you'll start to understand the, the, the benefit of this. You get to work on the object once. And this is great for 3D modeling and things like that. When you're working on characters in, and you just want to work on separate objects at one, one at a time without things getting in the way, it just frees you up as an artist. All right, so to get out of this local view mode, I press the slash key again and our camera and lamp have magically come back. Uh, if you're not a fan of shortcut keys, you can also do it within the menu. So as you can see, it says here view, just click that and you can obviously see here, you can do the left view, the right view, the front view, it's not pivoted correctly, um, and the bottom view and so on. And you can obviously see the shortcut keys here as well. So numpad three is a right view, as we discussed earlier. So if you ever forget some of the shortcut keys, you can always press view and just uh, remind yourself what those shortcut keys are just by looking at this. So that's pretty useful. Oh, I forgot to mention one more, the camera. So if you want to view what your scene would look like from the camera's point of view, you hit numpad zero. So now you can see exactly what it looks like just by pressing numpad zero. Pressing numpad zero again will return back to your old, your default view, whatever view that you had before. Yeah, and obviously if you can do other stuff like you can pan left, pan right. All the shortcut keys that we discussed in this video are pretty much here. You can also do fly navigation, and which is sort of similar to like using a game, I guess. So you just uh, move the mouse up and down just to pan around. Um, I'm just and just follow the keys that you see in the bottom over here. Oops, I'm not I'm not a big fan of this, but uh, I guess it can be useful for the for you know observing a massive scene where if you if you have like a massive city or a suburban town or a car race map or something, I don't know. This this fly navigation thing could be useful, but <laughs> I, but I, yeah, it is a little bit finicky, finicky to work with for me at least. Uh, yeah, if you want to get out of it, just press escape. So that's pretty much the basics of uh, manipulating the view. I hope this video has been useful to you. Uh, keep working on it. Uh, try to manipulate the view. Try to get comfortable with it. So keep working on this, uh, keep manipulating the 3D viewport, uh, try to get comfortable with it because you will be manipulating the 3D viewport a lot when you work with Blender, whether it be making games or making a movie or even just um, creating a 3D rendering or even just creating an, an art, digital art image of some sort, you will be um, transforming the view a lot. So it's best to com get comfortable with um, you know, working with this view. If you start to become comfortable in manipulating the 3D viewport, you'll start to find that um, working on your 3D projects will be a lot more smoother and a lot more pleasant to work with. So keep at it, keep blending, and I hope to see you in the next video.